and Shia. Welcome to episode 33 of Res Metal Podcast. On this episode, I talk with Brian Ortiz, who is the mastermind behind Motley and Mortuary Punishment. Brian is also a member of Zabalba and uh, is a songwriter slash guitarist for Zabalba. I was very fortunate to have him on this podcast just because, you know, he's a very accomplished uh, artist and musician. And I've been a fan of Zabalba for a few years now. And uh, within the past year, just got into Zimpontli and Mortuary Punishment. On this podcast, we focus more on Zimpontli. And uh, if you don't know Zimpontli, it is a a heavy death doom project that incorporates uh, Mesoamerican Mexica or Aztec uh, culture and history. Probably one of the heaviest bands out there to incorporate like indigenous uh, influences. And uh, big congrats to Brian for joining up with 20 Bucks Spin for the upcoming Zimpontli full length album. Really looking forward to it just because 20 Bucks Spin is one of my favorite uh, labels for heavy music out there. Just this year, 20 Bucks Spin put out some amazing albums that will for sure be on a lot of end of the year best of lists. Albums like uh, Gravesend, Methods of Human Disposal, uh, Ghastly, Mercurial Passages, uh, Enigmata, and Deconsecrate. And there's also two more releases coming up this year, uh, I think uh, next month, uh, from Atrabolus and Worm. Heavy stuff, so check them out if you haven't. Anyway, I'm looking forward to the new material from Zimpontli and 20 Bucks Spin. In the meantime, check out the Zimpontli uh, EP slash demo on Bandcamp. I'm going to play a quick clip from that EP and then go right into the interview, so uh, check it out. I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh, just calling here from uh, northern Arizona. Hell yeah, um, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, and uh, I you know, understand you're in the L.A. area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in uh, uh, Pomona, which is like half hour um, from, from like right outside of Los Angeles. All right, cool. Yeah, thanks for uh, letting me talk with you and, you know, doing this uh, podcast interview. Yeah, 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 of course, man. Uh, I appreciate you uh, asking me. Thank you. Yeah, I've been uh, been a fan of uh, a lot of your projects. Um, I first got into, I think I think Zabalbo was probably the first one. And then, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, and then uh, probably like uh, within the past year, just got into Zampontli and uh, Mortuary Punishment. So, oh, yeah, hell yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, those are, those are still kind of new to me, but uh, Zabalbo was the... Uh, the first of your projects that uh, caught my ear. Fuck yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, I, I made up some questions here, so uh, I mainly want to, you know, kind of, you know, start out just kind of getting to know your background, but then um, kind of wanted to touch on uh, Zampontli because, you know, you guys, uh, you and Ed Zampontli just got um, recognition by 20 bucks spin, so that's that's really sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, man. Yeah, um, yeah. They, uh, uh, I basically just like approached them and and uh, was like, hey, uh, um, would you guys be interested in like 
putting out this LP that I got ready, and um, they were like at the top of my list of like labels that, that I wanted that I was aiming for. Um, so like I was, I was stoked that they were like the first ones to like respond to me and like um, were like, yeah, like 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 we'd love to put this shit out for you. And uh, so yeah, man, I was I was definitely fucking fortunate to have to like go searching too long, you know. Yeah, they're one of my favorites. Um, just this past year, like. Almost uh, all of their releases I've been picking up. Um, I think the most recent one was uh, Enigmatum. Uh, I think they're from like Portland. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, one, yeah. That the, it sounds really good. Yeah, it does. Yeah. The, 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 uh, my favorite was uh, um, uh, they put out that. I forgot how do you say uh, I had to like see the names to like read it out because some of the fucking names are just ridiculous. But it's like so solid. Solithus or something like that. They're from uh, Finland, and like just really good doom metal shit. And yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I got that one. Yeah, that one's that one's sick. Yeah, it came out about a year ago. Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it's fucking yeah. The, I've been a fan of, of that label for fucking like probably going on like ten years now, and yeah, they they like are. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, like, they're, they're definitely like top of like the food chain. In, in regards to like underground death metal and and I think even death metal in general and and doom metal and it's just they just put out fucking just 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 you know like just classic yeah. fucking shit like just good stuff like good quality stuff yeah and so like I was I'm very fortunate to you know be able to get added to that roster so I'm, I'm hoping I, I I do them proud you know oh hell yeah no I uh, I I'm sure you're gonna you know. I mean, for them to recognize you and and put their name behind your work, dude. That I mean, I'm I'm already looking forward to it, and it's it's gonna be oh, sick. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. going back to some Pontly, um, uh, I understand you. It was kind of like your uh, like a project of yours, like a one man project. Was that how it initially started? Yeah, yeah. It, it initially started um, as a one man project. I mean, like I like. Um, I I didn't really have any expectations or anything because I was like I just want to put these songs that I have written out and um, I uh, I'm not gonna lie man I'm kind of a fucking control freak when it comes to like music and shit so like like I didn't want to have to fucking deal with like any fucking drummer shit or anything like that or like jamming with anybody I was just like man I can just do this fucking shit myself and um, so I I just programmed the drums and was like I'm just gonna just gonna be me like a little side thing just just to, just for fun you know and we'll we'll see where it, what happens with it you know and um luckily when i did that um when i recorded like, like it ended up sounding pretty decent for like a lo-fi record you know and um or a, a lo-fi demo and then like you know i was approached by um a transylvanian uh, recordings so sh shout out to them and um when i initially just released the digital with a, uh, um, with like a t-shirt or something like that. Um, he, he hit me up, James and fucking wanted to put the tape out. And like, it, I, I think, uh, with him helping out and, um, kind of, uh, kind of helped out a little extra kind of got, got like my name and, or, or like the Sampali like name. And then like me as, as, as just writing shit by myself, like kind of got my name a little bit more out there in like circles that wouldn't, wouldn't normally like know who I was or knew what I was about kind of shit. So yeah, how did the um, yeah. I had the idea of starting that project? Um, how did it initially start? Well, so uh, Shababa is basically like um, I mean, it, it's me, you know, my singer, my drummer, and our other guitar player. Like we're the core members. Me and me and my drummer like write all the music, and then uh, we we write like a, a good chunk of, of the lyrics. And and put together like like the songs like we're definitely part of like the songwriting part, um, and then our singer comes in he does his thing and then we kind of coach him if we have to on certain things that we've come up with, but you know it, it's a collaborative thing with uh, you know three different three different egos three different kind of uh, head, sometimes buddy and sometimes not like um, so like there's a, a lot of different things that that we tackle with with Shabala like um, you know like just like personal struggles. Um, you know, uh, our culture, of course, um, more 
kind of like streetwise kind of shit, you know. Um, and then um, with some partly, I basically wanted to just, I, I wanted to sing, like, you know, I wanted to, to I had a, a specific way that I wanted to sing, and I, I wanted to um, basically just focus on just, like, the cultural aspect of, of the music and not have any, like, politics, no, no, um, no struggles, uh, uh, no personal stuff, just uh, other than my culture, just basic fucking, just like Mexican fucking and, you know, fucking like, like Mexica type sh stuff. And, and that's basically what I wanted to do. Just like hone in on, on a certain portion of, of the culture. And yeah. So like, that's basically yeah. what I yeah basically what I wanted to do and then like like with the mortuary punishment stuff is basically just straight up like like street stuff um, just like street hyper fucking masculine type shit you know that like all my masculine energy goes into to that that project um, and this this one is a little bit more uh, like spiritualistic and. Um, it's just still heavy and brutal, but uh, but uh, a lot of the this was on, was on um, like the history part and um, and yeah the kind of spiritual side of it at times and so yeah. How do you uh, how do you get like some of these um, uh, like influences? Is it do you like seek out like um, like history books or do you like seek out like you know like um, specific music or indigenous music or how do you how do you bring that all together for some Pontley? Um, so uh, with some of the um, uh, the the folk side of it, it's just um, it, it's it's two things. I, I, I'll listen to some kind of folk uh, uh, stuff uh, that's uh, you know that 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 catches me. Um, I'll read up on it, and and then I'll also listen to to some of the, the artists and, and and some of the uh, the like soundscape ambient records that that are put out. Um, but then I, I'm also very like uh, I used to play drums too, and I've always been a big percussion and, and drum head. So I, I just you know like percussion is is a big thing for me. So I've always just kind of always had just drums playing in my head, and uh, so like uh, I, I add like big big sounding drums over you know the, or uh, I should say underneath this like kind of layer of, of folk instruments and. Um, I, I definitely get my inspiration from um, just. Uh, I mean, I, I'll read a lot of books and stuff like that on on, on the Mexica and um, uh, other cultures that are like uh, um, that that were in that that mess. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. I uh, I'm, on, I'm on the Navajo reservation and uh, I don't have the best Wi-Fi. It's kind of kind of spotty. Yeah. Yeah. Especially around this time, everyone gets out of school and. Everyone's yeah, everyone's on. on. Yeah. yeah, everyone's using the nah. server, so, but it's all good. I mean, it's still it's just it's just a little spotty, but. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I, we were just talking about like how you were like you know, you get you drew like these like you know, uh, influences from you know the music that you um, would listen to and the like history that you would read up on. Um, the mute the some of the instruments I I heard on the the EP demo. Uh, you know, there's I, there's like some flute and uh, the digidero, uh, I think. And um, oh yeah, the the, the didgeridoo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that um, is that you playing those, or do you have to like you know find someone who? No, no, yeah, the, that that's all me. Like, like I've tried to keep it to instruments that I know how to play, because um, uh, especially when I was doing the demo, I didn't want like. Like I, I was like very like adamant on like not this is just gonna be me I, I don't I don't need help like whatever I can do I'm gonna do it myself because I don't I just don't want to rely on anybody uh, you, you know what I mean like and, and I just kind of did everything like that um, so like all, all those are me and um, so some of the other like kind of like extra like quote unquote like like percussion and like so some of the sounds are, are actually just me. Uh, uh, keeping time with both my hands slapping my knees, and I just I just layered it layered it so much that it sounds like like it might be a drum or you know, <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's just uh, just me just kind of trying to figure out ways to kind of um, you know make it sound cool and 
Yeah. I mean, you can make you can make anything sound fucking badass if you throw some fucking reverb and like a little bit of echo on it, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's cool. I dig it. It definitely builds that atmosphere of kind of like, you know, when when I listen my first listen to it, close my eyes, yeah, definitely like, you know, looking at the artwork kind of just uh takes me to a place like with like, you know, these like huge like you know Mayan like uh, you know structures and ruins and then yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of you know I, I don't mean to offend you but but kind of like brought kind of remind me about uh reminded me of the first time I listened to Nile you know that Nile um death metal band um yeah no it, it, it's it, it's funny you mention that because uh when I initially started getting into death metal like in like the mid 2000s um it was like Nile was one of the first bands that that that, that I really got into, and um, I, I always said to myself, I was like, "Fuck, I, I love how they incorporate all the this like Egyptian feel in the music, but I want to do that, but with like fucking like at, like like Mexican like Chica Mexican Aztec kind of shit, you know, or, or Mayan whatever, or like Mesoamerica in general. Just I, I want to bring that same feel." to that and I want to create like an atmosphere that that when you hear it and you think of it like oh shit that sounds like some like some like fucking like Mexica or like Aztec shit you know like so yeah yeah hell yeah same uh, I tried to, to do the same thing and then um, uh, of course as I got older like I started discovering more bands um, doing doing the same thing you know or trying to do the same thing and kind of started to focus in on that and um, started to kind of teach myself and and, and and learn what it, what instruments were predominantly used uh, back in the day, uh, as well as like some more new age ones that are that are get that get thrown in the mix. Um, so yeah, man, there's you know, yeah, hell yeah, always I'm always I'm always searching I'm always searching for something. But yeah, man, Nile for sure fucking helped kick that shit off back in the day. Yeah, in the darkened shrines, that's one of my favorites. Yes, yeah, yes. It's so fucking heavy and like brutal, atmospheric. It's it's really cool. Yeah, it's yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think my favorite is is probably Black Seas of Vengeance, but I don't know. Sometimes, in Darkened Shrines, is my fa- favorite, but then sometimes Annihilation of, of of the Wicked is my favorite. But it's usually between those three that that I'm like, like fuck this band's like, these are my, my three favorite records by them, and I don't know which one's my favorite. Some days it's that one, some days it's it's another one. So, yeah, but yeah great fucking band. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I always thought was funny was when you buy the CD, you know, the booklet, it's, like, super thick, and it's almost like, a, like, like all the essays that, like, uh, I think Carl yeah. Sanders was writing for all the, yeah. every single song is, like, it comes with, like, five pages of, like, personal essays of what each song meant, I was, I thought that was Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, I, I thought that shit was sick, too, because, like, I grew up in, like, um, I grew up going to, like, hardcore shows uh, back then, and I mean, I still go to hardcore shows now, but like, um, I grew up going to hardcore shows, and like, a lot of the like vegan, uh, vegan straight edge bands w- would have these long ass essays um, that they would write along. So like, it, it wasn't anything new to me, and I, I just like, I, like I was like, okay, that, that's cool, like you know. But I wasn't vegan, um, so like, it, it didn't really, you know, didn't really do anything for me. But like, when I would see those Nile records and, and then his essays on like, the, you know the. Like like on Egyptian history and, and with the songs, man. Like it was, it was just really fucking cool. Like, Yo, this is badass. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, and then going back to the to the, you said you recorded a, a full album and you were able to uh, get that out to twenty bucks spin. Um, like how? Uh, what was the time period of you recording that full album? Was that during the For, uh, pandemic or? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I started. Uh, I, I I booked two weekends, so it was a total of four days in uh, June, and uh, um, I, I I basically like cranked everything out except for the drums. Uh, uh, my my homie that that, that recorded me, his, his name's uh, uh, Roly. He um, he works out of this uh, stu- his studio called Bright Light Studios, and he actually uh, sessioned uh, a, a drums for me and, and did a fucking amazing job. Um, but yeah, so. We did that shit in like four days, everything. So, um, like, I don't know. When I listen to it, it doesn't sound rush. So I'm hoping it doesn't sound rush. But um, there were times where I was like, "Fuck, like, are we gonna have enough time to, to finish this, or do I got, I got to book another day?" And I was kind of hoping not, because like I couldn't afford it. Like it was not in my budget. But um, 
yeah, like I basically d- did it in, in four days, and then um, um, once I got got the, the mixes back, um, um, that's when I like I started like uh, I sent it to, to twenty bucks, uh, twenty bucks spin, and I sent it to another label. Actually, I sent it to a couple other labels, um, but twenty bucks was like the one like that I was like hoping for, like okay, I hope they hit me up first or, you know, um, and, and sure enough, they were the only ones that, that did. And I was like, all right, it's a sign. Like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> here, like, here we go. Yeah. He, 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 he dug it. And yeah. And then we started, like just talking about like, like what we're, what we're going to do. And, um, you know, like, like, yeah. Well, uh, so hopefully it'll be out, um, Early, early 2022. Okay. So that's, that's what we're aiming for. Yeah. Do you have an artist for the um, for the album art picked out yet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's uh, um, uh, this artist. Her, her name's Andy. Um, she's from uh, like deep in like Southern California. I think she's in San Diego County. Um, but yeah, she's with uh, I believe I believe they're called uh, AVS. Or, fuck, I don't know. AVS Longheart or, or something. I don't know, but. She's fucking sick. She's on. She's on Instagram, um, and yeah, she 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 did the uh, the painting uh, for the front cover, and then she did um, the uh, like she kind of put, put together like a little sketch uh, for like the, the back cover. But yeah, she she did, basically did like put the whole front cover of of the LP tape and and CD, and then um, yeah, and then for for the layout, uh, this artist uh, named Dan. Um, Dan, Dan, I think it's Dan Freed or maybe Dan Fried, but yeah, he, he did the, uh, the the layout and yeah, it, it it looks it looks sick. I'm just like I'm completely fucking happy with how, how everything came out and I, I'm like very like just anxious to, to get it out there. I just want to show people already because it's I'm like you know <laughs> yeah. very proud of it. And, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I was I was actually hoping you would say Dan Seagrave did the artwork, but it's all good. <laughs> oh man, yeah, no. Nah. I I would love that, but he just unfortunately uh, um, like I did uh, I did the um, the art I paid for the art portion myself, so like I, I just wasn't in, in my budget unfortunately. <laughs> but I would have loved to done Dan Seagrave, but but you know also um, um, the uh, the homie Andy she's she's a um, she's Mexican, so I really wanted like a a, a Chicano like like indigenous artist to, to kind of be a part of, of that so um like maybe in the future i'll do a dance seagrave but but yeah like i really wanted it to be like a mexican artist and a chicano artist yeah. or chicano artist oh yeah no i was just thinking like you know with the zabobas um album arts that were done by um i believe it was Dan yeah yeah like kind of building that build off of that but yeah that's all good that would be sick like, he's he's, a, he's an amazing artist he's fucking great nice um <laughs> Yeah, no, that's cool. You really uh, touched on a lot of um, what I was um, kind of interested in hearing regarding the Tsumpantli, but um, kind of just going back to kind of like just you in general, um, uh, where uh, whereabouts did you uh, kind of like grow up and, you know, where whereabouts, whereabouts are you now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I'm actually, I grew up in, in uh, I was born in, in L.A., um, but uh, I moved to Pomona when I was like two, which, I mean, it's, it's not far. Um, I said it's like right outside of it, and uh, I mean I guess if you can argue it's in the greater LA area, so to speak. It's definitely in Los Angeles County, and um, I uh, I grew up in Pomona. Um, I I've lived in in a bunch of different places, but uh, I'm actually back in Pomona now. Um, so uh, but yeah, I, I grew up here. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm fucking. Uh, I love it here. It's just uh, it, it's home, and like I've always felt comfortable here. I know where all the spots are and shit, so, like, it's... But I, I live in other places where I just, like, I didn't completely feel comfortable just because, like, I know, I don't know, like, I'm just, like, a in certain parts, like, I'm just, like, a, a big Mexican guy, so, like, sometimes I just stick out, like, a sore thumb, and, and I, I never liked that, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good to be back home and, and shit out here, so... Yeah, no, I, I can relate. I, uh, I grew up about... about an hour and 30 minutes from where I currently live now. Like, I kind of moved around for, like, school and work, but uh, yeah, kind of yeah. just, this is kind of the area I grew up in, so I was just kind of 
drawn back to it when I wanted to, you know, find a place to settle and work for a little while. And on top of that, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty much an introverted kind of person. And so like being in a rural area really doesn't bother me, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's really, everything's spread out here. Um, but you know, I, I was actually living in Phoenix, Arizona before and you know it was cool with like all the like metal shows that would go on like almost every night but um i don't know a lot of times i just kind of felt like stuck in my apartment but here it's like i can like wander around for miles and it's it's kind of nice but um, yeah yeah no, I, I feel that yeah like like uh, i i'm definitely like i don't know i don't know if i'm introverts i feel like sometimes i could be ex extroverted but that's usually only when i'm like drunk but but even then like when I when I am drunk and I and I, I don't have those like anxieties, uh, you know, in, in my body, like I just I still only like to be around like people that I know or like my friends that I feel comfortable with, or family, you know. So, but but yeah, like I, I you know I don't like being around too many people unless I know them, you know. Like yeah. so, I, I definitely feel that. Like I just like I came home, you know, basically because um, I mean it, it's 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 L.A. It's kind of I mean, if you're not if you're not some type of like like making some like crazy ass money or you're just a working schlub like me, like it's it's hard to live on your own out here. So um, I, I moved like back with my parents, but now I'm like you know like out on my own again, of course, um, with my uh, with my fiance. But um, yeah, it's just it's just uh, it's funny fucking you know life is funny. I mean, you could go on all, all kinds of journeys and shit but you're always gonna like end up back home and shit you know like, yeah for sure and then um kind of like you know when, the area you grew up in um like how did you first get exposed to like heavy music and then who or uh what was there a specific band that that inspired you to start playing guitar yeah yeah so um i mean yeah that's that's definitely complex in, in itself just because like um, my dad um, was like a rocker, basically. So he would play like Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath, and um, I, I was all about that that shit, like Jethro Tull and you know, old like heavier classic rock stuff. And um, I uh, basically uh, my cousin kind of was along the same lines. Like he liked uh, his dad listened to a lot of like the, the like Mexican crooning stuff. Uh, or, or his brothers listened to a lot of hip-hop and oldies, but, like, him, too, he kind of was a little bit more, like, into, like, like rock shit like, like that we were into. And uh, so um, we started, like, just kind of, like, listening to, like, like whatever, like, whatever was on the radio. So, like, um, like at that time, like, like Metallica got played on, on the radio because, like, the Black Album was had just come out and uh, uh, Nirvana was... Like like pretty big, so like that stuff was was just like really cool when we were like children, like you know like fucking ten eleven years old, um, or or even like uh, no actually no that we were younger when the shit came out, so we were like like I think like six or seven, and then like when we started to actually get really into music, um, uh, it was definitely like like um, bands like that, like alternative rock bands like Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, um, like Nirvana. Uh, big on like Rancid, of course Metallica, Pantera, Slayer. Um, uh, back back in those days, uh, though, like we, 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 I mean, we're, we're still kids, so we can't really differentiate the styles. We just know that the fucking guitars are distorted and it, it's it's a little bit more uh, abrasive than what we're, you know, used to. Um, and then um, when I was in about like fifth grade or like sixth grade, um, we started listening to like more like like kind of like um, still like Metallica and Pantera and stuff like that, but started going more to like the punk route. Like li listen to like Bad Religion, um, Rancid, um, Pennywise, shit like that. Um, and then s still listen to like everything in the mixed um, in the realm of alternative rock and like just heavier music. It wasn't until like high school where we started to like go strictly like punk rock and like more aggressive kind of music um slayer slayer and pantera were like the only the, the bands and soundgarden too um the those bands uh i never i, I never stopped listening to because like 
even though like I was like trying to be gung ho like punk rock and shit like that like those bands I don't know I just, there was always something about them that I just never hated on um, but yeah like so high, yeah high school came through and uh, um, fucking we were just like punk rockers and then we like, kind of made the transition into hardcore uh, and then from hardcore I, I, I kept going and more extreme got into you know death metal black metal do metal and stuff like that um when I like when I was like fresh out of high school and um yeah man basically just kind of snowball from there now I like I just listen to like everything uh, uh, under the sun but like I mean death death metal and and, and do metal is like my you know like what I always go back to and oh yeah Black metal, I love, I love yeah. black metal and stuff like that. But was yeah, there, man, like was there a I, specific I, I, guitarist I or something everything. that inspired you to play the guitar? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, back in the day, um, when I first, um, like when I first like thought a guitar looked fucking sick as hell, um, was uh, Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath and uh, uh, Carlos Santana and and of course fucking Jimi Hendrix. Like I, I, I thought they just looked fucking so cool. And then when when I got older, um, uh, it was uh, basically like uh, it was a uh, um, the, the the guitar player. His name is uh, uh, Scott Krause. He plays in a in a in a hardcore band called Earth Crisis. And uh, like basically like seeing like him like the kind of guitar that he used, I just thought was so cool because they're like one of my favorite bands. And um, that kind of inspired me to like buy the guitar that, that I wanted and. And, and, and play a, a, or kind of like focus a little bit more on playing guitar and um, of course like like uh, Kirk Winstein from Crowbar uh, uh, another one when I was younger um, Trey from Morbid Angel uh, but yeah th those are like the guitars that, that, that I like looked up to and stuff when I was a lot younger and then s still do like but yeah definitely Tony Iommi and Jimi Hendrix and, and fucking and actually um uh, uh, Tom Morello from from Rage Against the Machine too. Yeah. That, that was that was another one that was like, um, fuck man, I, I want to rock. <laughs> like oh, yeah. like that shit. I was like, yeah, this is this is my shit. Yeah, Rage Against the Machine. I, I think is like the first band though that like, um, I like obsessed over when I was when I was a kid. Um, like that was the first band that I was. That was like that's my favorite band. Like no band is above them. Like that's 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 my favorite fucking band. Like. Like, I had, like, literally, like, every fuck like, like so many fucking Rage Against the Machine shirts that I could wear for, like, three weeks straight. Like, I had, I was covered three weeks straight of clothes just because, you know, they were all Rage shirts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, shirts, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, like, that, that, that was, like, uh, that was, like, the first real band that I, like, obsessed over and was, like, a straight-up, like, fanboy over. Um, well, all the other ones, like, I liked and I, and I fucked with very hard. But that was, like, the one where, like, I was like, nah, dude, rage, rage through and through. Like, I'm a rage guy. And, but, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a musical journey, though, man. Like, that shit never fucking stops. Like, there's a lot of fucking shit that, like, I'm still finding out about and still, like, listening to and obsess over. <laughs> there's a lot of those bands going on today, so. Yeah, I know. That's, that's cool. Um, yeah, I was going to say that Rage Against the Machine, um, uh, I forget their last album um, off the top of my head. Uh, it was the Battle of Los Angeles that that album yeah, that yeah. on the shirt? I was always blew me away when I was like in middle school. Yeah, that, I yeah, that's my my least favorite album. Uh, actually, their cover their cover album is my least favorite album because it's just covers. But like the ones that they wrote, that was my least favorite. But definitely had the coolest fucking cover. <laughs> Hell yeah! Then, but I um, still love that record though. I still I still love it. Yeah, and then you know you you being from. Uh, LA and growing up in LA um uh you know a lot of like LA bands you mentioned um but um what are some like newer uh like LA bands that you know you you would like uh, listeners to check out uh from LA I, I would say Teeth um the uh my friend Roly that that uh, played drums on the record on the Sapali, on the new Sapali record he plays guitar and sings in a band called Teeth from LA, um, really good, just technical. Uh, but actually, I don't want to say technical death metal. It's, it's just like kind of more like dissident kind of like death metal. Uh, it has some kind of, of like smidges of, of technical stuff here and there, but mostly just really good fucking heavy dissident hardcore. 
uh, I mean harp, I mean uh, death metal. And then um, our place of worship is Silence. They're a little bit more like uh, like uh, on on like the, the black metal side of, of death metal, um, but uh, they're really good. Um, there's a band uh, I think they're from LA. They're called Sivorous uh, or Sivorous or um, okay. I got I got their I got their tape. I I had to, to see what it like like how to read it out. But yeah, they're from LA. They're really good. I think they have a tape out on uh, on Transylvanian actually. Um, it's really good, really vibey. Um, death metal, like like kind of old school style death metal, but like with a really like black metal kind of vibe to it, like with the atmosphere and then like uh, the the cool like like long songs, so a little bit of doom sprinkled in there too. So good fucking band. Uh, but yeah, man, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of fucking bands coming out here. There's like a, a hardcore band that I've been like fixated on lately called Zulu um, from out here that, that that I that I fuck with hard and. Nice. Um, I don't know, man. There's, there's just so, so many fucking bands from, uh, from out here that are just fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, out here, um, a lot of it's... Um, actually, I'd say um, there's quite a few bands from uh, my area out here, northern Arizona, northern New Mexico area. Um, uh, a lot of... Um, actually, uh, there's a metal fest that just got announced uh, yesterday, and Alien Weaponry is supposed to play on it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, shout out Alien Weaponry. They're, they just had an album yeah. that came out today. I was listening to it all day. Is, is it good? That's that, that Maori band, right? Yeah, yeah. They sing in the yeah, Maori yeah. language, and it's kind of like a, yeah, yeah, like kind of like Bloody Roots era Sepultura, I would say. Just yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I remember them sounding like 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 Roots or, or like a soul, like the early Soulfly or uh, like Ectomorph kind of like heavy. Yeah. Group metal type shit. Yeah, they got they got uh, little sections of thrash where you know they're just like thrashing out, and then they kind of bring it back and start yeah. grooving again. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're sick. They're they. I think this is their second time playing here on the Navajo Reservation. But um, uh, oh, a band I was going to recommend to you. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Mutilated Tyrant. Um, no, no, I'll keep them though. Yeah, they're uh, they're Navajo uh, black metal. Um, like uh, they're from this area, like. I think they're right now they're kind of more focused on like the like singing in like the Navajo language and kind of being more oh, that's, culturally that's um, sick. yeah inspired um but you yeah, know if you look at them you know, yeah if you look at them they look like like straight up like early 90s like mayhem and like you know dark oh, fuck, funeral yeah. but, but it, yeah know, they're sick I, there's a band I, I don't know where uh in Arizona they're from but uh they're uh, um Hold on one second. Hey, dude, relax. Hey, chill. Sorry, my dog's fucking tripping. My bad. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, it, there's a band from uh, um, Arizona um, that the, that I've been following called uh, Homeland. I think they're called. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like from Dallas. They, they used to be called. Area, yeah. I think, yeah, they, they used to be called like I think Zerg or Zorg or. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That band's really cool. That that, that shit reminded me uh, a lot of like like early mayhem and uh, shit like that. Like the old like Norwegian style. Fucking I thought that shit was really good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I interviewed. Uh, uh, he goes out. His his name is like Ritual. Like that's his like a uh, like his stage name. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but um, yeah. They they put out a new like it's just a single song and it, it's like full on like skate punk with like you know Norwegian black metal riffing. It's it's really sick. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I I heard that the, the, the shit sounds fucking sick. I was like, yo, this is badass. <laughs> that, whatever the, whatever that shit is, I need more of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I really hope uh, they get more like recognition and yeah, we need more material from them. Oh yeah, yeah, for for sure, man. Yeah, we definitely need more of that. Yeah, and then oh, one quick question. So I, I you know yeah, I follow yeah. the um, the I follow your uh, projects on Instagram, but. One of the things I, I notice is a, a lot of like um, uh, posts about Sopranos, and uh, I'm, I can't say that I watched the whole series. But uh, <laughs> why should people? Uh, my question was just like, why should people uh, check out the Sopranos? Why? Okay, because uh, it's literally, I mean, in my opinion, uh, it's the best TV series ever ever made. Um, especially if you like crime drama, it, it's it's the best crime drama e ever. Um, they basically, basically like were the game changer for bringing big budget uh, series to 
you know, to TV and stuff like that. And uh, it, it's just it's just so well written. It, it's it, it's funny. Like like people don't like. I mean, if you watch the finals, you know. But if you don't, like, you wouldn't expect like, um, you know, like a, a crime drama to be like like so funny. But like you you catch yourself fucking laughing like a, a lot at the show and just how ridiculous some of these people are. But it's like this is just how mafia so type people are and stuff. So, but uh, it's it's I don't know, man. It, it's just it's just a good fucking fun show. Um, of course, serious, but it's got like everything. There's like there, there's like it's dark. Uh, it's it's it, it's it's dramatic. Uh, it's funny. There's even like little supernatural shit sprinkled in there um, in some of the seasons, and it, it's it's just a, a really cool fucking badass series. Like I think everyone should check out. Yeah, I need to just start from the beginning and and go through it. Um, yeah, yeah. It, 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 for what I hear, like a lot of people think that that like when they start from the beginning, like it, it's hard to get through. But like, I mean, the first season's great, but it starts to like the show starts to get even greater as it progresses. Like season two, three, and four are, are arguably like the best seasons in television history, in, in my opinion. It's just like the way it flows. Like you could literally wa- like like binge watch those those three seasons in like like a couple of days just being glued to it because it's just so it's just so captivating and, and and like I said it, it's it's a fun watch like uh, like I know it doesn't seem like like Sopranos would be a fun watch but it it is and uh, yeah man I think everyone should fucking do that shit so you can hit me up and you know understand the memes that I'm sharing <laughs> nice yeah I, I've mainly been just watching a lot of like sports lately I mean I, I watch a lot of like college football and I know USC is like looking for their new coach right now, but hopefully they can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get somebody. They just fired. Good. Yeah, I, I hope they do. That dude was fucking trash. Um, yeah. And Clay yeah, Allen. yeah, I, yeah. My family's uh, we're we're all a USC fan, so um, for college football and, and yeah, like it's it's been a rough. I mean, it, it's been a rough fucking like like ten fifteen years, but like. It's it is what it is, you know. Yeah. Programs it, it happened. And the whole fucking Reggie Bush shit, like back in the day, kind of fucked us, which is stupid. Because it's like, man, just let that fool take some fucking money to feed yeah. his family. Well, now they <laughs> they, they uh, they're they're allowing players to like uh, profit yeah, off yeah. their likeness now. So yeah, he should yep. get his Heisman back and get, yeah, get exactly. that national championship <laughs> back to USC. That's that's what I'm saying, man. Like it, it that shit needs to happen because yeah, that yeah. shit. Up. Even when that shit happened, it's so ridiculous. It's like, yo, like, like, what incentive does he need? Like, he already wants to get to the NFL. Like, what, like, what more is giving him a, a, a couple hundred, a couple thousand bucks here and there to survive and feed his family? Like, how how is that going to be much much different? You know, like, fucking a. And yeah, the, the colleges are fucking. They, they've been making making out on bandits or fucking off of players' likenesses for fucking years. And it's like, fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> fuck the, you, NCAA. The, the NCAA and all the like athletic directors and college coaches—they're all like multi-millionaires and billionaires. Yeah. And then like yeah. the players can't even like get like a, a fan to you know buy them coffee for lunch and I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you you always hear the, the, those stories too, like you know, like oh yeah, fucking like. Heisman Trophy winner fucking is, is asking people for money or, or, or whatever. Like, Heisman Trophy candidate fucking can't even afford to buy shit, you know? Like, it's like, come on, man. And then these motherfuckers are, are, are in their ivory towers fucking kicking back, like, you know, collecting all this fucking money for not playing football, not doing shit, except for just regulating, you know, what college players can and can't do. It's just, fuck out of here. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I always, like, remind myself that yeah like yeah these there's there's like just a bunch of white suits you know just yeah profiting off this like badass football game i'm watching but yeah uh, exactly but uh i'm hoping usc can hire um uh josh mcdaniels the offensive coordinator for the patriots because i think that's how Pete carroll came along i think he was with the patriots and then yeah he came to yeah, usc the and just dominated yeah <laughs> um, yeah he, he, the best fucking I mean in my opinion I, I think he's the the best coach USC's ever had but uh and then he, of course he he killed it after the whole you know after he left and went to the Seahawks like he's 
And it's even today, he's still killing it. It's just a good fucking coach. Yeah, yeah, he's good. I mean, I, I mean, I, I watch a lot of like, like documentaries and stuff like that. But I think he's just like a really good like, um, like motivator and. Yeah. Like every yeah. person he hires is someone he personally knows. So then, like, there's not like weird, awkward, like uh, a working relationship. Like every person that he's ever worked with is like a, a good friend to him. And yeah, he just like yeah, puts yeah. together a good, a good coaching staff. Yeah, yeah, and, and like, like, like it, it, it's probably, I, I don't want to like, like make it sound like fake or anything, but like, he's definitely got his own like brand of, you know, like, sort of like style going on, like his own culture, like the Pete Carroll, like, you know, like him and his team are, are there to uplift people. And I think that they're just, they're probably just really good at, 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 at like you said, motivating the players and, and just, just talking to them and, and, and getting them ready for, for these games. And yeah, and he's, Fucking sick ass, fucking sick ass coach. Yeah, oh man, I hope USC comes. Uh, yeah, I can get the right guy. And yeah. if, I mean, I, I'm a Arizona fan, and I mean Arizona right now is like a dumpster fire. But I mean, they just hired a new coach, so hopefully uh, yeah, this yeah. year is going to be bad, but next year will be hopefully winning more. Yeah, that's the whole show, man. <laughs> the Pac-10 or the Pac-12 needs to fucking come back on top, man. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But, yeah, thanks for uh, talking with me. Um, I won't. Uh, I won't keep it too long. Uh, oh, one thing I was wondering: can I? Uh, would it be cool if I play something off of your demo, the Zimpati demo? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, play, awesome. uh, play, play whatever you want, bro. All right. All right. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, man. Have a have a good night. Have a good weekend. Yeah, yeah. Take care, man. Uh, thanks again. Thanks again for having me. All right, no that was my interview with Brian Ortiz from Zimpati Mortuary Punishment Zabulba. Yeah, sorry, we got sidetracked at the end. Uh, I've been just watching a lot of, like, college football, and now NFL just started, so I've just been pretty absorbed in that. And so, yeah, I just wanted to mention the USC coaching situation. They're still searching for the new head coach, and uh, people don't know USC is, like, the premier, like, college football program this side of the country on the West Coast. So, uh, anyway, uh, thanks again for listening. Um and yeah, just be sure to check out some Pontley, um, pick up their music on their band camp or, uh, you know, just stream it um, any way you can. And uh, also check out some of the other projects, Much Worry Punishment and Zipoba. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and play a track. Uh, it's going to be the second track off the Zipontli demo. It's called uh, Lamanali, which I believe is uh, stands for The Offering. So, yeah, thanks for listening. Um, you know, take care, be safe, if you can.